Okay, where are we at? I should really know this. Have you load up? Bam, bam, bam. Awesome. Okay. So what we're doing at the moment is just testing out the new webcam. Um, it is pitch black outside at the moment and there's not a lot of good indoor lighting at the moment. So I uh, have just wired up on my studio lights and I've got that over the track. Uh, the reason for doing that is I don't actually need the lights to make the track visible. What I need the lights for is to reduce the exposure time. So the lower the exposure, the sharper, fast moving images are. And so if you look really closely at the car, um, you can probably see a bit of blur, not that much. Um, but if I leave it to auto exposure, uh, the car becomes one thick gray blur. Um, so the only way to really reduce the, um, get high quality video um, and high speed movement is to uh, really, really have good lighting. So that's what we're testing today is basically what does this look like in bad lighting? And then on the weekend, uh, we'll actually check what it's like in good lighting. And I'll see if I need to bring in any additional lighting beyond what the sun provides in order to get the exposure cranked all the way down. And if that doesn't work, uh, I might have to look into getting a proper uh, camera for recording. Uh, there's a couple of really nice DSLRs out there uh, that make good options. Um, but basically, I mean, having a look at the image at the moment, Everything looks relatively good. Um, the car's pretty clear and smooth and easy to see, but I'm pretty sure we can make this significantly better as well. So that's that's what I'd like to do is just tweak it a bit and see what see how good we can get it. So while I've got that up, I can actually adjust the settings in real time. So if I drop the gain, for example, it gets a bit darker, but I actually probably want to bump up the gain a bit which introduces a bit of noise and then let's drop the exposure a bit more I've got a feeling that the uh, the gain is adding a whole lot of latency as well and blurring so I've just dropped about I've dropped the exposure by about half um, and the the images should look exceptionally crisp now well not they should be, look a bit crisper I shouldn't exaggerate here So the video definitely seems to have a bit of a different feel. I mean, if I bump up the exposure, so I'm at 28, let's bump it up to about one, two, three, four. Now you can really see that the lighting is quite exaggerated, but look at the blur on that car. And this is a complaint with a lot of the videos I see on YouTube is that they'll be using the default settings and then racing around the tracks and the cars look like this. You can't tell when they're, um, they're moving. You can't, or oh, sorry, you can't tell exactly where they are when they're moving. Um, when the cars are racing together back to back, they just blur into each other. So let's drop that by half. And as you increase the exposure, you get better low light performance, which is one of the reasons why you'd want to crank it. But I'm really concerned here about action shots. And keep in mind, I'm also driving from a heavily delayed video stream. I'm not looking at the car directly because I'm trying to see what the, the changes in the exposure are like. So yeah, this looks better. Um, still not very good. I mean, this is also significantly exaggerated. Normally the video footage I see on YouTube is not this quite this bad. It looks probably, let's drop this to about 368. Yeah, so that, that's actually a bit better than what I'm used to on YouTube. So let's try about 500. Yeah, th this is about the exposure I expect. And see how the car seems to get longer when I accelerate? And none of the, the details on the car itself are exceptionally, exceptionally sharp under acceleration. They sort of, all the detail disappears. So now we'll just crank that back down to, I think I had it at 28. So this is a very awkward and manual process. And I'm also gonna bump up the gain a bit. 
So the gain's definitely adding some noise to the image, and I'm not terribly worried about the noise. I'm more interested in the contrast and getting the lighting right, uh, and the blur. So I'm going to do that, and I might bump up the brightness a bit to try and compensate. There we go. Uh, the brightness does make the image tend to go towards white, which I don't really like. But we might just have to do it for this low light condition. So I wouldn't say the colors are super accurate, and you can see a bit of noise at the moment, but... Like, e even under acceleration now, you can make out a lot of the details of the car. Um, and that's important because it allows you to take a bit of a closer look at the wheels and get a glint on them, but it just makes it easier to understand what the car is doing uh, at any given point in time. So this is just some basics for photography uh, for high-speed action shots. You want low, as low exposure as you can get. Um, you want really, really good lighting because it allows you to tweak the exposure some more. Uh, what else do you want? You want to get your color temperature right. Uh, I've just got the white balance on automatic and that's been reasonably good. The reds are a bit punchier on stream than they are in real life. Um, but uh, that's fine. I, I kind of like that cinema, uh, that effect. Um, it makes them pop a bit more. Um, what else is important? So the other thing is, this is only 30 frames per second. Uh, I still haven't worked out how to do 60 frames per second on this camera, but this camera is literally only two or three hours old, and for the most part, I've hooked it up to my work VM. Um, yeah, Mega, I'm, I'm thinking about actually setting up the second studio light, and in fact, if you bear with me, let's try that now, and we'll just do a quick experiment. Okay, so these are nice big panel lights as well uh, with adjustable color temperature uh, and I'm a big fan of the adjustable color temperature because um, if you add two lights of different color temperature the brightness of the light does not increase you actually have to match the brightness uh, you have to match the temperature color of lights uh, for them to be additive in terms of uh, the color so the first thing I'll be doing is, on the second panel I'm setting up, is making sure the colour temperature is the same value. Um, but I've tried to match the overhead light, not that it provides much light to begin with. And also, considering I'm on the other side of the room at the moment, I really hope you can hear me. Um, I do see it's in the yellow at the moment, but that doesn't actually tell you a lot. So the uh, photography and video recording of live Mini Z events has um, really irritated me over the years just because there's some really simple basics to make the footage look great that no one seems to know, which is understandable. Um, not everyone's going to have experience with photography and I wouldn't even say I've got a lot of experience but uh, I've had some, I've been taught some of the basics and uh, all it takes, 3800, all it takes is a couple of simple steps to make your footage look a lot better. Okay, so we're now at, let's adjust that there. We're now at double the light output. And that's looking a lot better. So let's drop the exposure to zero, basically. And then let's start bumping it up until it starts to look good. So I'm gonna put it there, which may seem a bit dark but I'll drop the brightness and let's up the contrast a bit. Oh, cool. So I wouldn't necessarily say this is an improvement, but it does give me more options. Um, when it comes down to it, it's very hard to beat the sun. <laughs> it just pumps out so much light and you don't really appreciate that until you try and try shine a law, uh, uh, torch during the day uh, and if you try and you, you need a lot of torches basically to match the output of the sun so I'd say I'm probably about I want to say about half the brightness of the sun if that um, but I think that's looking pretty good uh, the lighting is not even but I'm not worried about that too much so I think that looks great 
So yeah, the uh, tricks for the day, once again, because I'll keep on repeating stuff again and again and again, unless anyone tells me otherwise. Get your lights right, uh, get your exposure down as far as possible, uh, get your white balance set correctly, um, and then tweak the brightness, contrast and saturation a bit. <clears throat> now I am only doing this on, on, and try and get your frames per second up. Um, so getting the frames per second up and your exposure down are the two tricks to high speed racing footage. Um, a lot of the guides online will give you uh, defaults that work well for when you're standing in front of a camera uh, and presenting that way. But when it comes to high speed footage, the, uh, the aim of the game is slightly different. Um, I also did put some new swing arms uh, in the this new Mini Z. Uh, to co in the last video I chatted about there being about a one eighth of a rotation on the rear wheels. Um, these new sway ar uh, swing arms significantly reduce that even further. So they're just some PN racing ones. Um, and the car actually does feel a lot more controllable. I don't really have anything to quantify it, but I've been able to get really, really tight corners on this car with no issue ever since I've made that change. Um, I wouldn't say it feels a lot different, but it just seems to go where I want it to. So um, I don't even know how I'd quantify that. So for considering I'm just shooting with a webcam at the moment, um, I'm pretty happy with the results. Uh, I got the webcam rather than a normal camera for two reasons. One, I need it for work, uh, for the video conferencing. Um, and two, I don't know enough about the normal camera or DSLR cameras and what I should get in that arena. So let's just get some more crazy driving in. Uh, what else? I do have a Empower Racing forward suspension kit to go in. Uh, I've had some issues with the forward suspension springs popping out, so that should address that. Yeah, I'd love to see this in 60 frames per second. The other downside to going for, to 60 frames per second is that you end up cutting the exposure time in half, and so you need even more light to capture a higher frame rate. Um, so yeah, basically the more, more light you can add, and I just realized I've got yet another light I can check. I've got a small hand uh, light unit, um, which is very, very handy for situa situations like this. Now let me just bump up the brightness. Also for its size, it's uh, incredibly powerful. So that's been a lifesaver when I've done um, some of my videos in the past. So let's see, does that... I can basically use this to spotlight the back and just even everything up. So let's see if I can drive one handed. Yeah, I'm not going to get much of an improvement at this point, but I think you get the idea. And the point of the video was basically a technical test and to basically touch on some points um, or quick things you can do with your video to get uh, better footage out of um, uh, when you're recording Mini Z races. Because uh, that blur is just, it just doesn't work for me. I find it very, very distracting. Uh, thanks for that. I'm going to stop the stream and maybe I'll be able to cut this into something that's somewhat presentable. See you later.